Hello and welcome to the Bodyline Pro podcast. My name is Isaac Osborne, founder and CEO of Bodyline Pro. In this podcast, we interview practitioners who use Bodyline Pro and some of the leading experts in the health industry who are committed to taking a scientific approach to improving the form and function of the body and the growth and development of their practice. This podcast is also available on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Be sure to check out the show notes for links. For more information about Bodyline Pro, visit BodylinePro.com. Hey everybody, Isaac Osborne from Bodyline Pro, and I'm excited to be back on the podcast. I took about a month off. I had a bunch of stuff going on and wasn't able to get to this stuff. And I finally had a chance to get in here and edit uh, this podcast with Kevin Lucas that I'm really excited to have on the show. So we talk a lot about Parkinson's, practice building, foam rolling, structural integration. Uh, really love some of the, the before and after examples that, that we we're talking about and uh, really had a great time talking with Kevin. So Kevin Lucas is a certified advanced structural integrator. He holds a license in massage therapy. He began his, he began his education at the Utah College of Massage Therapy and received his advanced training at the Guild for Structural Integration. Throughout his career, Kevin has helped thousands of patients and, and specializes in working with severe conditions and diseases as such as scoliosis, Parkinson's, dystonia, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disease, and chronic pain. Kevin has spent a large percentage of his career working with all levels of athletes. For over a decade, he was a member of the medical team for Gonzaga University Athletics, providing manual therapy and movement education for his successful Division I athletic program. He currently works with professional and collegiate level athletes from all over the world. The founder of Neural Movement Integration, Kevin has dedicated his life to teaching, training, and educating healthcare providers how to specialize in manual therapy and movement education that focuses on the nervous, fascia, and connective tissue systems of the body. Neural Movement Integration is one of the few schools on the planet specializing, specializing in carrying on the profound life's work of Dr. Ida P. Rolf, who is the creator of the Rolf Method of Structural Integration. Kevin also is the creator of Relief Through Rolling, which is an effective pain-free pain -free foam rolling self-care program based on the principles of structural integration. His passion and expertise for helping people also extends into the animal world. Kevin is the creator of Healthy Paws Therapy, which teaches dog owners and caregivers how to perform soft tissue work on their canine companions so they can live more f full, vibrant, and dynamic lives. Woo! That's a lot of stuff. And uh, it was a very fun conversation with, with Kevin. He's got a lot to offer. He's, he's very exciting to talk to, uh, very knowledgeable. And um, without f further ado, let's get Kevin here on the show. Hey, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Isaac, um, thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I'm really excited to have you on here. I've been wanting to, you know, we've never met in person, but uh, I've been wanting to just uh, geek out with you on structural integration for quite some time now enjoyed our phone conversations that we've had and and uh, I'm really excited about everything that you're doing uh, you know uh, and we, we're gonna talk about all this stuff of course but uh, just really excited about your approach uh, how you're teaching uh, structural integration the results that you're getting your self-empowerment of your clients really love that aspect that, that you go for on that with your foam rolling and uh, everything else that you're doing. So I would love to talk about um, first, just kind of, kind of just, you know, something maybe a little personal about, uh, about yourself and just, just real brief, doesn't have to be really long, but uh, how you came to uh, structural integration personally. So that's a, that's a pretty fantastic uh, question. Um, you know, I don't think any of us knew when we were kids that we were going to be uh, structural integrators growing up. Um, and, and we kind of all get there in different ways. Um, a lot of people end up going down their path after having, you know, some pretty significant challenges in, in their lives. And um, for me, uh, I had a kid in high school um, and my wife decided to join the military and because I didn't have an education at the time and we were super young, um, I was actually a stay at home dad. And so I was at that point though, where I was starting to kind of go crazy out of my mind, not getting a whole, whole lot of adult interaction. And um, where I was living in Utah at the time where we were first stationed, um, there was a massage school that advertised like crazy, 
huge, gigantic, successful program. Um, and so I said, well, man, maybe it's a good way for me to be able to have my own business and work my schedule around what I wanted to do with my children. Um, so I went to an open house and was like, okay, and they were really pushing either, you know, go into the spa industry or go into private practice and the private practice piece sounded amazing. Um, started massage school a, a few months later and by the end of the first week, I just fell in love with the whole idea of body work and manual therapy. I'd never had a massage before. I didn't know anything about body work or manual therapy. Um, so it was pretty interesting that I decided to go that route. But by the end of that first week, I fell in love. And then about halfway through our massage program, we were actually introduced to the world of, of structural integration. Um, the founder of our school, Norm Cohn, was a rolfer, uh, trained with Dr. Rolf, and um, he actually took some of the tools and techniques and a lot of the methodology as a structural integrator, and they were part of our massage program. So I just, it, my brain just completely connected to it. Um, I went and watched a couple of my classmates have sessions, and I was sold. I knew that that's what I wanted to do after that standpoint. Um, so a week after massage school, I started my structural integration training, and it's all I've been doing, eating, living, breathing ever since. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, man. Fantastic. So you've traveled. Your practice has gone all over the world, hasn't it? Correct. Uh, I've started uh, I'm on my fifth practice uh, start. Um, with my wife being in the Air Force, uh, we've had to move, we had to move a lot. So we actually went from um, Utah uh, to South Korea, back to Spokane. Um, and so I've, I've been able to, to start a practice kind of all over the country. And last year, we just uh, kind of moved our final, I, I'm hoping our final move uh, to uh, northern, uh, northwestern Florida on the Gulf of Mexico, just outside of Pensacola, Florida. So it's been great because I've really been able to work literally with so many different body types, um, you know, living in an Asian culture where they don't have the same movement patterns and the same hobbies and activities and, and stressors that we do in the States. And, and even going from state to state, depending on what are the major industries in each area, you know, what are the predominant, you know, you know leisure activities and, and sports stuff. Um, and then as, as well as severe pain patients, you know, there's, there's different diseases or illnesses that are more prolific in certain parts of the country. And so I've really had a chance to be able to get exposed to a lot of different types of, of people and, and, and body types um, as I've kind of schlepped myself all over the globe, essentially. That's, that's, that's fun because I, I noticed that as well. Like when I, I've done some traveling too and, and I, was, I was blown away by uh, – when I was in Japan, like, I mean, complete opposite movement patterns of uh, right. the United States. And I, I, I never seen so many pigeon toed people in my life. 100%. Um, right. There's so many there, you know, right. and, wow, this is amazing. Um, and so, and, and also just from my practice, I, you know, my practice being in Hawaii for a long time and now in California, there's similarities, yeah. but there's, there's a ton of differences between yeah. here than there is in, in Hawaii. Right. Still very different. Yeah. That, that, that pigeon toad or that, that medial rotation, um, in South Korea was the same. I would say, especially in the, the female demographic, I would say close to 50% of the population. Um, we, I would see, you know, significant, um, moderate to severe, um, you know, medial rotation of, you know, the, that, that lower, lower limb. And so just so crazy where in the States on average, like if you think about the hundred people that, you know, how many of them genuinely stand, you know, even mildly, you know, pigeon toed and, and it's, you know, a couple out of a hundred usually. Right. Right. If that even. Yeah. Right. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So now you're currently, uh, you're currently in Florida, correct? Yep. Yep. We just moved to a small town called Navarre. Uh, we're just outside of the Pensacola. So I'm in a huge military um, area. So we have the Naval Flight School over in Pensacola. And to the east of us, uh, about 20 miles is uh, Eglin Air Force Base, which is one of the largest Air Force bases in the world. And it's one of the largest uh, joint special operations training programs or, or, or facilities. So we have a huge huge, gigantic uh, um, military and, and veteran community uh, in this area. So so it's not kind of the, the land of the old people. A, a lot of people were teasing us when they knew we were moving to Florida. They're like, oh, you're going to the land of the older people. And 
And so what's fascinating is that our part of the up here in uh, northwestern Florida is it's it's really a very dynamic and diverse uh, demographic of people. So it's been really really fun to start working with people here. Fantastic, man! Fantastic. So um, you have a, a structural integration school uh, called Neuro Movement Integration. Is that, is that yes, that is correct. Uh, you've been doing that teaching with your school because you teach across the United States, you hold, you hold classes. Yeah. Please correct me if I'm not understanding it, you know, not getting it right. Uh, across the country, uh, right. uh, trainings across the country. And it's, it's, a, it's um, that program, you've been doing that now for, for what? How many years? About 10 years now. Um, 2007 was when we, uh, 2006 is when we sent our initial um, application off to the International Association of Structural Integrators mm -hmm. um, and kind of got on their list as a, a recognized uh, program. Um, when we first had our school, um, we had we had the traditional, you know, on-site uh, campus. Um, so I would see my patients uh, during the day. And then we'd actually, I was running night programs. Um, so we would have, you know, class from, um, like six o'clock till 10 30 or 11, you know, every night, three, four nights a week. And then with some, um, clinic, we'd run our student clinics on, on the weekend. So we did that for about four or five years. And then, um, we, I, I really wanted to be able to, um, you know, Johnny Appleseed, the work, um, it's really difficult. And especially when the, uh, when the economy shifted, um, it became more and more difficult for people to kind of do the traditional training where you got to go move to, you know, one of the main campus sites. Um, and, and, you know, now you're, you're trying to cover expenses for your household at home and, you know, where you're living at, at one of the other, you know, schools. And so we saw a niche and a need to start going elsewhere. And so we changed our structure from an intensive format or, or a night format to um, our program is a 500 hour program where you already have to be a healthcare provider. Um, so you got to be a massage therapist, chiro, PT, um, nurse, you have to be licensed to touch. And how we run our program is it's one uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, once a month for 16 months. And so this has allowed us to take the program into areas where, you know, there were people who have, have wanted to become structural integrators for, you know, decades, and, and they just couldn't really make those resources work because of family or, or whatever. And then it allowed them the chance to receive this, you know, life-changing education and, and start working with their patients in the ways that you can only do uh, as a structural integrator. So it, it's been really, really amazing. Um, so about six years, I was, you know, from the West Coast to the East Coast once or twice a month for almost six years. So, yeah, it's been a, been a really fun journey. So uh, just curious off of, uh, like, because you taught uh, before that, before you started traveling so much, your classes were more the traditional sense where people have to come to you. And yep. so from a learning perspective um, for, for your students, what kind of changes did you notice in them? Are they are they are they soaking up the work more because it's over a longer period of time? Um, they're they're able to play with it for longer. Are they, are they getting a deeper understanding than maybe before. That like I just am covered in goosebumps as you ask that question because it's really interesting how you know we think okay we're gonna you know we're gonna come to this intensive and we're gonna train from start to finish and then when you have all of the information then you can do really outstanding work and what I've found um, and I can take before and after pictures of um, my students who were doing uh, we were going through the program in an intensive format and in this monthly format and you honestly couldn't pick the difference between which group of students was which um, and the reason that I think that that's the case is everything that you just said. When we train for four days, um, we're in the classroom for the four days straight. We're you know getting lots of great content in. They get to go home and play with it for three weeks before we come back and we start the next phase of the training. So they get to fill their sponge, empty their sponge, and really put it into play in a practical way because uh, again, all of our students are already healthcare providers. 
So when we start session one, they leave, they go home, they get to, you know, they, they work on their session one models in the, in the classroom, but then they go home for three weeks and they start putting their clients through session one. So by the time they come back, they've already done another five, six, ten sessions of session one. And so I think it really has helped them embody the work at, at, a, at a much higher rate. Um, and, and I know sometimes people, especially as Americans, we get really impatient and we want to boom, do everything all at one time and, and get done and then we can get started. But to be honest, um, the, the, the quality of the work that my students were doing with this, uh, 16 month format, one, one four day uh, week compared to our intensives, I believe and have seen, um, the, the retainability, the application, the embodiment of the work is, is blows out of the water compared to the intensive format. Yeah, and just for our, just for our listeners out there, I, I just want to let them know that structural integration classically is, is based off a 10-session process, and uh, that's what Kevin is talking about here, where he's breaking up the sessions and teaching those sessions over time, over a 16-month period, whereas classically, structural integration is taught in a format of uh, uh, modules that are about two months long intensives. So I would really, uh, it's interesting because it, it kind of get it, for me, like when I hear you talk about that, it reminds me of my time that I spent with, with Emmett Hutchins and in between classes, how much time I was able to soak right. and sponge up with all his knowledge in between those classes. And, and man, that was just huge for me to be able to have that resource like that. So it's really yeah. neat. I, I'm really excited that you're providing that resource for people and uh you know watching the growth and letting them play so to speak with with the uh, with the sessions in between the time um that you're having the classes i would i would imagine that does and obviously from your experience it creates a lot of inspiration in your students yeah and and i was a little nervous initially um the, the great thing about dr rolf's work is that you know the the level of permanence that comes with it um, you know, when you, you can, you can have someone and, and if they've been through a 10 series before, almost always, like you can, you can pick them out of a crowd. Right? right. And so, but again, people get sucked into thinking that if you don't do it all the time and you're not consistent with it, you lose those results. And so with our models getting one session every month for 10 months, I'm like, oh man, what kind of an impact is, is that going to have? Are they going to get lesser change and benefits throughout the process? Um, and after, you know, looking at, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures, um, like I said before, I could take our intensive students before and after pictures and their models and our, uh, our extended uh, training, our 16 month program. And you literally cannot pick the difference between which person was in, in which training. So for me, that was an even greater validation of how effective this work was where a student doing the work the first, the second or the third time sees their patient, they go away for a month and they, they come back and we were getting just as much lasting sustainable change as if we were doing it once a week for 10 weeks. That's exciting. Really exciting work, man. Congratulations on, Thank on you. Uh, stumbling upon that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to ask too, uh, and then also maybe we can just lead into the foam rolling stuff that you're doing. Is the foam rolling stuff that you teach, is that part of your school? Is that in your school curriculum as well, or is that, or is that completely separate? No, it, it is now. Um, so for me, a, a little bit, just to rewind just a little bit, the, the bulk of my clients, I have two main um, demographics that I specialize in. Um, the first one are severe pain patients uh, and severe conditions and diseases, particularly movement disorders. Um, I was very fortunate that I got hooked up with um, a, an amazing neurologist by the name of Dr. Anthony Santiago, who was specializing in Parkinson's and dystonia. And one of his patients, uh, her husband was seeing me for the 10 series and he brought her in for a session one day, day to watch and observe. Um, and then he wanted me to kind of evaluate, palpate, just kind of see what was going on within her body. I'd never worked with a movement disorder patient before. Um, and so they're asking me, oh, what do you think? Do you think you can help? And, and verbally I'm saying yes, but in my mind I, I was almost petrified because I, I'd never seen or felt anybody to, to that degree of severity in regards to hypertonicity and her severe tremoring, um, it was something else. And so what was important for me more than anything else is as effective as the 10 series is, 
I believe that we need to empower our, our culture. You know, over the last 50 years of, of modern medicine, we've given our power away in the, the, the guise of medications and surgeries. And when we need those, they're an amazing tool. But for most people who are significantly suffering consistently, they need to have something in the moment to be able to, to manage what they have going on. And some of my uh, dystonia patients or Parkinson's patients, their tremoring would be so severe that if I couldn't get to them in time, like if I got a phone call at you know two o'clock in the morning and they were transitioning into a very severe flare, they were actually being taken to the hospital and induced into medically induced comas to stop their body from the level of contractures that they were doing so they weren't tearing muscles off a of bone and weren't breaking bones. That, that was that severe. So um, for almost my, my whole 20 years of working with patients, um, this desire to have them have a tool that people can use anytime in a moment that they need help, whether it's pain management or increasing range of motion or, or whatever it happens to be, that was the focus. And the body work world, you know, we're introduced to a gazillion different, you know, tools and gadgets and, you know, thumpers and vibrating, all these different things um, that can be quite expensive. And honestly, a lot of them just collect dust, right? They go into the corner, they, you know, stay in their box, they, the dogs get to play with them when they turn into whatever. Right. So for me, um, when I was introduced to the foam roller about 2004, 2005, um, my client was doing a technique, that typical IT band technique where you put the roller you know, perpendicular to your femur and you roll up and down and the tears are coming out of the eyes. And, and I was just like, okay, you got to stop. We need to do something else. And so in that moment, I was like, how can we take the techniques or the way that we try to work with our patients on the table and replicate that with the foam roller? And we've been doing that. I've been doing that with balls since the very beginning. But a lot of times with a ball, it's too much direct digital pressure as the patient is laying on the floor, putting their whole body weight on a ball. And it was either bruising the tissue or causing inflammation and it's spiking, you know, pain patterns down the road because that, that process of more is better. And I found with the foam roller that that was happening less, particularly when I was able to take the way that we work through certain regions of the body on the foam roller. And so that was kind of the, the birth of that. And then we were able to facilitate an entire program that takes for every session that we do, we have techniques with the foam roller that literally mimic as what I believe as closely as possible, the techniques that we're doing either on the treatment table or with a lot of our seated back work. And that honestly was the, the most exciting thing for me was the, one of the back techniques that we have um, mimics the way that we do our, our seated back work as we take that tissue from lateral to medial, you know, almost in every single session at the end of our session, we spend so much time doing that. And we've been able to um, find a pretty awesome way to, to replicate those techniques, I think, as closely as possible. That's fantastic. And, th and so um, when you, when you do, are you doing before and after photos with the foam rolling stuff too? Um, we, we've done a little bit here and there. Um, we're, we're in the middle of a, of a huge revamp with our, our foam rolling training. Um, so that's going to be part of our process going forward as we start to train you know, more instructors with the foam rolling dynamic moving forward. Um, we're really encouraging them to um, do before and after pictures um, with Body Line Pro. And especially for like our movement educators, our Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, personal trainers who aren't supposed to touch, the RTR techniques actually give them a way to mimic the body work we're doing on the table. So they're getting to do all of their movement stuff and then incorporate the body work aspect, even though that it's not body work, but it's replicating what we're doing. Um, and they're seeing, you know, huge, huge, gigantic um, results. And so we're really encouraging them to, to do the before and after pictures because when those clients see those changes, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a game changer, honestly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. To have that, to have that, that feedback, um, the visual feedback is a huge thing for clients. Um, so did I understand you correctly that the foam rolling really started with working with uh, Parkinson's. Yep, Parkinson's and dystonia. So the worst of the worst patients. Um, one of my patients actually lectured before Congress um, trying to get uh, more approval and funds um, to receive uh, structural integration. Um, and uh, and because that's been one of the most significant elements for her and moving forward and, and, and regaining you know her functionality in life. 
Um, and so a lot of the fo typical foam rolling techniques that you, you go on to YouTube or, or any of the other social media sites, um, you see a, a group, Smash it! Yeah, yeah our, our fascial mashers. Um, you see really fit, healthy, strong people like planking on the roller in all sorts of, of really yeah. difficult ways. I can't take a 70-year-old Parkinson's patient and have them support themselves on the floor like that. Well, I, so think, really, I think it would be really important right now to really talk about how and why that's what you're, what's different. I mean, like when my clients say, oh, I, I foam roll my IT band all the time. Right. I say, well, first thing you need to understand is that the IT band is a tendon. It's, it's a giant right. tendon and right. rolling this thing, you're trying to kill it and smash it, but it's the muscles that are moving it. I mean, yes, there's connective tissue restrictions, right. all that stuff. It's the muscles that are responsible for moving that tendon or right. band out of place. And so as you, and, and it hurts like hell, right? Right. And, and so they're smashing the hell out of it, but there's, they're not getting any changes, right? They, you know, I've been foam rolling my IT band for the last three years. And, and we're like, well, mm -hmm. it's the same as it was. So don't you think that you need to do something different? Right. Well, what's, I think it would be great to have you speak to our audience about why that's different and what you're, how you're approaching it. So the number one thing that makes relief through rolling very different than most other foam rolling programs is that everything that we're doing is 100% pain free, not kicking a patient into sympathetic nervous system while we're trying to get them to down regulate it is it's, it's that oxymoron where, you know, it's going to hurt so good, but now everything is just even more contracted and you don't facilitate any change. So everything that we're doing is always completely pain free as we're working which then allows the patient to be able to make those changes in that nervous system and then ultimately potentially changes those motor out and the tensional loads within the structure. Mm -hmm. The next piece is that within every uh, RTR technique, we have multiple variations. So you can either do them up against a wall, seated in a chair, or laying on the floor. So because I had to re essentially reverse engineer really through rolling to work with the worst of the worst, once we figured out how to work with, you know, a patient who's, who's tremoring and controlling and, and can't, you know, support themselves on the floor, but we put them in a chair or put them up against the wall, all of a sudden they were able to do self-care work at home, you know, one or two days a week or three or four days a week, whatever was working for them. And they were getting that consistency of that down regulation process, which was huge. And then honestly, the, the other thing is um, the way that we're on the roller. We're almost always in all of the techniques on the roller in a way in which you have a larger surface area of your body being supported. So it's almost impossible for it to be painful because it, it, it's about, you know, direct digital pressure, you know, a soft fist compared to a fingertip. Um, when people are on that roller, especially in that perpendicular dynamic, it, it kind of bites into that tissue. And then the other piece is while people are doing our techniques, everything is super easy and relaxed. So if you're planking the roller and you're causing your whole structure to engage, it tightens up all those tissues and you're not going to be able to have the tissue soften as you're trying to, to work within those, those regions. And so, so those are, I think, some of the, the, the key elements. Um, in addition to, we have a recipe. You know, you can take spot work with instructional integration and do 10 sessions of spot work. Or you can do the first three sessions of the 10 series and you take that patient or client so much further because you're, you're following the recipe. And I really believe that, that, that the brilliance of the 10 series and how I'm pairing and linking relief through rolling techniques together to support each other is, is the big picture, is really the, the big picture thing. Absolutely. You know, when in, in the past when people ask, would ask me why structural integration is is a 10 session program um or it's a process is is that systematic approach of going through the body with goals and and organizing that organizing the body and i kind of you know i kind of like when you like my example was or was that when i clean my house everyone starts in a kind of a different place but i typically like to start in the kitchen first and then i go it kind of radiate out to the rest of the house so you can't clean up the whole house all at once right you have to you have to take parts of the house so to speak start cleaning it and then 
right. do one big sweeping thing around the entire house. And that's in a lot of ways what, how I view structural integration, the, the 10 session process of, of um, Dr. Rolf's work is that you're going through systematically through the body, organizing these, these parts of the body and then integrating them. Right. Um, and, and my, so I, so the, the other demographic that I spend a lot of time with are elite level athletes, uh, professional Olympic collegiate level athletes. I was on the medical team at Gonzaga university for a decade before I moved down here last year. And it was a similar process trying to get the athletic trainers to really understand that, okay, every week I can chip away at this athlete's low back. But if you, and, and by the time we're done, I've worked with them eight, nine, 10 times if you let me start working through the 10 series, and there was this one um, uh, basketball player in particular, she ended up being a, a WNBA, you know, huge all-time star. Um, well, she had been in the school for about three years, and they, for three years straight, always the same issues. I said, okay, we're, we're not gonna do spot work, we're gonna, when they finally had her come see me, said, we're gonna go through the 10 series. And by the time we got to the third session of the 10 series, she had the least amount of pain and the most amount of functionality that she had had since she was 14 years old. And so it was in that moment that the trainers finally saw the relationship of how things are working together versus that segmented, okay, now we're going to just ice and stem your knee. Now we're going to ice and stem your low back. And as these things are all interrelated, that was the huge shift. And then from then going forward, once they really could see that, that process, then they were like, okay, so, and some of the athletes I only got to see once or twice, depending on, on where they were at. So we would do some spot work using, you know, SI principles. But when we really wanted to move someone forward, you know, it was, it was the 10 series. And, and again, I like to tell people, um, you know, I, I would have a structural integration off, you know, any day of the week. And, and on average, what we can accomplish with the 10 series versus, you know, double or triple the amount of sessions with spot work format it, it just, it's, it's not even on the same planet, my experience after working with thousands of patients. Yeah, I, I experienced the same thing. Absolutely. Um, and I've made, I've, I've personally made the mistake of doing in the past, I think you can call it a mistake, but it was, it was also when I look back on it, I was, I'm grateful that I did it because it, it brought a lot of value to the 10 sessions um, and that, that systematic organization of the body. It, it right. allows you to focus and relate things across the whole rather than right. like saying just like, well, if I just, if I just fix this spot, right. Then everything's going to be okay. It, it can't, it, the, the relationship of the entire structure has to learn how to relate differently than it, than it's been doing. Right. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Fantastic. It was fun stuff, man. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. We're, we're super excited. Uh, so with, um, this client that uh, that you bring in to the podcast today that we're gonna you know geek out with some before and after photos here. Um, tell, let's, let's tell the audience a little bit about her. So uh, also keep in mind too that this is an audio podcast and we're gonna we're it's also it's gonna be on you it's also on YouTube as well. So okay. when we talk, we want to be able to talk in a way that that for people listening um, that we can let them know try to just from an audio perspective of, of you know, what's going on in, in Perfect. This, uh, client of yours body. Okay. So, uh, so why did she come to you in the first place? So uh, this woman um, is diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's uh, and her Parkinson's is actually pretty severe. Um, severe tremoring of the, the hands, the shoulder girdle, um, hypertonicity uh, within a, a large percentage of her overall structure. Um, she is probably one of the most um, interactive clients that I've had the privilege of working with in regards to her whole goal is to manage her Parkinson's with no medication, which in the Parkinson's world is pretty much everywhere you go in the country, you know, the, the neurologists doing as, as good of a job as they can just shove massive amounts of major medications down their throats. Um, the husband and I, where uh, her husband, um, he comes with her to all of her sessions because she needs, you know, the help being able to move and get in and out of doors and cars and steps and all that kind of stuff. Um, he 
they've traveled all over the country seeing different neurologists and it's the same treatment protocol. Okay, show up, here's your diagnosis, boom, here's, you know, you know, eight different medications that we're gonna we're gonna put you on. And not only do they put them on significant amounts of med medications on average, but they take them immediately to the highest dosage possible. So instead of trying to work with minimum dosage, on average, it, it's the same treatment protocol uh, uh, across the board. And this is where my work with Dr. Anthony Santiago um, was, was life-changing because one of the things that he did was always trying to have the minimal amount of, of medication intervention as possible because so many of those meds create disconnect of the sensory functionality and ability. And then when you start adding Botox on top of that, where they're paralyzing musculature, um, it, it, it's it's pretty frustrating. You know, people can't feed themselves. They can't button their own clothes. They, I mean, it, it, it's it's huge. Yeah, that's huge. So um, we have this uh, this woman here, um, and she this photo that we're that we're looking at right now is yep. for uh, session one. Yes. And, um, so let's let's uh, from a structural integration perspective, uh, structural integration doesn't really. I mean, it takes into account that yes, there's Parkinson's, but it doesn't allow. It doesn't um, try not structural integration. Try to, tries not to be biased over that with the correct right. Can you can you say a little bit about that? And also uh, from an audio perspective, like looking at looking at this woman's body from the eyes of structural integration. Right. So the, the first piece that a lot of people have a hard time understanding about structural integration is that um, the, it, it's an organized process. Just like building a house, even though that there's an infinite number of styles of houses, the order at which you go about building the house is relatively the same, right? We have to excavate the land. We have to get a foundation sorted. We then can go to framework and roofing and, and, and so on from there from those orders. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're in Greece or whether you're in, you know, rural North Idaho, um, that, that process and that order is, is relatively similar. And so when it comes to the body, whether I'm working with a Parkinson's patient or an elite level athlete, the, the 10 series doesn't change its extensive protocol by, you know, who we're working with. As I'm working with a patient, you know, I'll take tissues in a little bit different direction. The verbiage that we use to connect with the patient and help them have better awareness is, is, is varied from patient to patient, but the general order is relatively the same. So as we're looking at this patient here, some of the, the common, you know, deviations that we're, we're seeing um, are going to be her left trunk uh, is more compressed uh, than the right side. Um, so a good way to understand it is that it would be like if a, a three-year-old child was kind of hanging on her left arm, kind of pulling that whole left side down. That's that's kind of one of the ways that I like to say that. Um, she has pretty significant um, forward head posture, um, and and what a lot of people don't understand is that. So now we're looking at that lateral view, um, and we can see that there's a, a pretty significant amount of rounding uh, ventral drag medial rotation within that shoulder girdle and, and then the head. So one of the things that she really struggles with is as the tremoring is increasing in that shoulder girdle, that whole front sheet or front line of her body starts to really contract, pulling her forward. Well, the more forward she gets pulled, the more the backside has to contract to try to correct that and compensate for um, that, that body falling and collapsing forward. So then essentially, you know, she's got major sheets of tissues on both sides compressing the whole entire structure. And then on her, we're seeing more compression throughout her left, um, like uh, oblique QL region, uh, more so than, than her right. Yeah, you can see it from the, see it from the side that you just look at it, just her left side, a lot more compression on that left side. Yeah. On the right side, I mean, even... You can really see that in the that left shoulder being pulled down. Right. You're saying like that's such a great analogy of, of you know someone hold, like hanging on it like a, right. Know, so like, so you know, as we look, arm, you know? <laughs> yeah. So as you as you look at this posterior picture, you, you can completely see that, right? Yeah. Um, it, it really looks like there's a weight you know holding her from her arm down, 
Um, and then we can see how much that's um, migrated that scapula laterally. So it's coming away from the midline and it's winging up off of the rib cage. So we can really see the stress and the strain along that medial margin uh, of, of the scapula. So not only do we get the tug of war of front to back, but now her right side to try to correct her and bring her more upright has to really contract. And we can see that up through her cervical spine um, and that trapezius and, and those tissues um, throughout that whole region are, are just like, they're literally like bone. They're, they're, it almost feels like you're touching her shin, uh, but in her neck. Like that's how hard those connective tissues get in a lot of our Parkinson's and dystonia patients. Yeah, it's like tissue pretending to be bone. Right. And if you flip back to you have this front picture, the other thing that I want you to, uh, to keep in mind is that, and I know some of the viewers listening on the audio can't see this, but if you look at her toes, her toes are completely lifted off of the ground. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways that her body is trying to compensate and trying to find stability is that there's a tremendous amount of tension um, within the feet. And even though that she doesn't have any tremoring going on in the lower girdle, for the most part, her feet are, are turned on all the time. And I like to talk about it like a, like a dimmer switch. If we have our lights on a dimmer switch where, you know, they're firing at a nine out of a 10 all the time. And if a person isn't lifting something heavy or is not moving quickly, everything should be at a one or a two. We don't need those lights on and so much engagement happening but in a lot of patients even if they're not parkinson's or dystonia patients all human beings when they're having to compensate more than less it turns on all of the connective tissues the nervous system is ramped up amped up and, and the lights are on more than what they should absolutely yeah all those other muscles have to work harder because the other ones are just going for a ride correct awesome so we're going to go from uh from the front here we're going to do uh the after i'm going to toggle back and forth and uh, for those that are viewing uh, on YouTube, there on the lower left-hand corner is the timestamp. So you'll see that, you know, you can, if you get confused, which one I'm toggling back and forth from. And so uh, as we go, maybe uh, I think it would be great for you to talk about, <clears throat> you know, this is the first hour of structural integration, the air, you know, everything that you just pointed out, but like basically like a basic format of what you kind of did during the session so that you can see um, so people have an idea of why why the results that you're getting perfect you're getting. yeah so in the first hour of our 10 series um, dr. Rolf refers to it as the hour of vital capacity um, some of the main goals that we're trying to accomplish this session is beginning to um, free the shoulder girdle off of the rib cage as these big bulky muscles start to contract and, and pull and put a lot of pressure of that shoulder girdle onto the rib cage, it prevents that rib cage from being able to effortlessly, you know, open and close or expand and contract in, in an easy way. And so it can prevent the, um, you know, like a fuel air mixture in your car, the more air and fuel you get through it, the more powerful, the better the endurance, the better the gas mileage. And it's the same thing within the body. Um, the, the, the easier it is for a person to have a higher level of oxygenation within their structure, it changes everything, not just within the structure itself, but all the way into that cellular level. So as we work up through the rib cage, um, and we work up into, you know, we're starting around the diaphragm level and we work our way from inferior to superior, we can see uh, one of the principles that, that we utilize is, is an ideology of we're working up the front and then down the back. So as that body is able to lift up in the front, if you don't, if you don't mind, line, Kevin, if I'm yeah, to interrupt, but no problem. That that piece right there is really important to talk about and relate to what you said earlier about her front. So yeah. as we go into the the after photo, why don't you talk a little bit about that if you don't if you can about yeah, the, what we're seeing here in the photo from doing just that? Yeah. So as we look at this after the first session picture, um, there's a tremendous amount of, not only does the rib cage lift in the front, but it also opens, it gets bigger. So if you imagine you had a balloon and someone was kind of squishing the balloon three-dimensionally to put their hands around the balloon and, and made it smaller, um, as we finish with that first session and a lot of the larger outer layer musculature is starting to soften, um, and change, whether that's, you know, neurological intervention or, or there's a lot of ideas about what we think is happening today compared to 50 years ago. 
But what we're seeing is that her, her front is lifting up so that that term, quote unquote, better posture is, is there. The key with this is that she's not physically forcing her body to be in a different position. She, what I have my clients do when we take their pictures is I have them take a breath in. As they exhale, they just let everything relax. And we do that at the beginning of every picture so there's no cueing. I'm not telling them to fix their posture, adjust their posture, or do anything. So in this before and after of this first session, some of the huge changes are you can see for those of you that are watching the podcast is that there's a huge shift and lift happening about her bra line as again, that balloon just looks like it, it just opens up. And then as that tissue on the front stops contracting or holding so hard, it allows the tissue on the posterior side to soften which then lets the shoulder girdle and the scapula set it back in a, in a more neutral position. Yeah, we can also do it. We can also do it side by side here too. Uh, so we can go. Yeah, there you go. So again, and as I was saying about it, looks like there's a, a little kid holding onto her left arm. If we look at that anterior view, um, we can see uh, if you can flip back Isaac to um, just uh, a single photo. Uh, no, you can go uh, the dual photo, but um, if you can look from an anterior view, there you go. Um, it, it looks like, you know, that little kid let go of her left arm, and we can see that left trunk opening up. She's not leaned or pitched over to her left side um, nearly as much, and we can see a lot less strain, especially within that rectus abdominis uh, area. Exactly. Yeah, you, you see, uh, like, the, the that lower lib, rib level – uh, right above the crest of the ilium, like those lower ribs, like ribs nine, ten, there on her left side, in the in the before photo on the left, we're seeing a much more compression in that area, right, and a lot less compression in that area on the after photo on the right. Yeah. Now, now something that that's really interesting, and and we get challenged with this a lot with a lot of doctors right because I do a lot of lecturing to medical professionals uh -huh. and then they'll say oh well you know of course she looks better after because she just had a treatment so you know this is not really a, a valid you know form of assessment because you know of course people are going to look different at the end of a session so what's fascinating though is, is that the reason that we also do our before pictures when when either we have clients or medical professionals really questioning, well, it was only because the result of the session that you just did, if you pull up her before four picture, uh -huh. this one here, yep, we're going to be able to see that if you go from um, before one to before four, she's still holding and sustaining a lot of those positive changes within her structure. We can see those abs are not as sucked in. So even before we did the session, now we're going into our fourth hour, um, she is sustaining and, and holding those, those changes. And then when we, especially when we can do that, you know, at the end of our 10th hour, and then I take pictures of, you know, a year later, uh, where a person has maybe had maybe one tune-up in that whole entire time period, they can see that the work, is, it is actually sustainable and it's lasting. Um, and it's not just because of our magic as the therapist. Our goal with this process is to get people to be doing this on their own without us having to do it for them. Right. And so if you, uh, if you can flip to an anterior view, and if you look at before one and before four, so there's before one, we can see the asymmetry Look at the before four or before four. So look at how much of that work is holding. We hadn't even done the session that day, and look at how much better those those lines through that rib cage and shoulder are. Yeah. Now what's interesting is that each session does facilitate significant change because they all have their their own parts to the equation. So now if you look at after four, well, hold on just a second. I just want to for the audio listeners out there. I just want to explain what just in a, in a very simple that. The child hanging on the arm, so to speak, is no longer in the bef in the before four session. You can see uh, he also has uh, an alignment grid behind his client here, so you can see that the center line, and she's standing relatively close to the same spot she was standing in the in the before one photo. You can see that her head is shifted over more towards the center of the line, whereas in the before one, she's really shifted over and kind of leaning over to the left quite a bit as opposed to the 
before four sessions, she is, she is more closer to that center point and, you know, her arms are not perfectly level, but the significance of that, of how much more drop down her left hand is compared to her right hand has, has leveled out a lot more in her body at, in the before photo, before four photo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's perfect. Great way to say that. So, uh, so please continue. So now, so let's look at before four to after four. Uh -huh. Before four, after four. After four. We can still see that in the before four to after four, there's even more change that happens. And the body continues to kind of open up a little bit more. Um, and so within the 10 series, the way that Dr. Rolf designed the 10 series is that each session is focused on working and freeing a, a different area of the body to facilitate um, changes throughout the, the whole structure and not only are we trying to get differentiation meaning that if I contract you know if I move my hand my shoulder shouldn't have to move in order for me to move my hand and through the mechanism of, of compensation the body all gets locked down and parts start moving that aren't supposed to move when, when the hand is moving then people start shrugging and elevating you know their own shoulder so then if we look at, so, so even within its own session, it facilitates change, but neither of these two pictures are anywhere close to where she was at the beginning of the, the first session. Absolutely. So then if we look at, so then if we just compare before one to after five. Or before one to after five? After five. Mm -hmm. So there's from the front, before one to after five. Right. You can see how much space and span. So if we were to measure the amount of distance between the waistline on her shorts and the bra line on her sports bra, we can see there's a tremendous amount of, of space that has happened. In well, look addition, at, look at, look at uh, we're, we're looking again, using that, that the grid in the background of, of her, you can see in the, in the before one photo, her left ear is on that, that bolded blue line. The horizontal line, yeah. and then on the after five, her her ear, the, her lower lobe is almost above, right? Almost above that blue line. So, do you know how big those squares are? They're two. They're two inch blocks. So she almost got. She, it would it be safe to say she got about an inch to inch and a half difference of yeah. of, of lift through her entire yeah. body. Easy. Yeah. Her, like one of the things that she was noticing is that her shirts, where the, her shirts normally hang down, she has some shirts that uh, now that she's wearing, she can't wear them anymore because the hemline on the shirt shows her belly button a little bit. Uh -huh. And so they're, they're too short now. But when she was compressed and rounded forward, the bottom hemline of the short was below the waistline. And so that's one of the things that she was laughing about the other day was that, you know, she has to start um, getting some new clothes for her wardrobe because the clothes are fitting differently than, than what they have the last eight or nine years. <laughs> that's funny. Um, there's a lot of anecdotes like that, that that we could probably talk all day about. Um, right. So I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're really busy. We're about, we're about five minutes out from uh, 11, 11 o'clock on my time. Um, and I know we mentioned, we talked that you had some stuff going on right afterwards. How are you doing on time? Uh, I'm, I'm good actually. Um, so, and there, there's one more uh, view that I, that I really want people to see. Okay, let's go um, so if we look at a posterior view uh -huh. and you can bring up, um, before one, um, at before four, after four and after five. And I, and I want people to see when we take people through this process, um, it, it, there's each session seems like it's not a lot of change, but when you add a couple of them together, it's significant. Yeah. So if we look at the very first picture, we can see how much her back is contracting. The, those lumbar spine, we can see, it looks like if she were flexing her bicep, it would be like she was you know, trying to point someone to the gun show, right? She's engaging that bicep. And, and in the back of her body, we can see those erectors really contracting and grabbing down in that lumbar spine. We can see that left scapula is really pulled a long ways away from uh, the spinous processes. The, the medial margin is really winged up off of that, that rib cage. Um, and it looks like the three-year-old is holding, holding her arm down. 
So if you go to the after one, we can see, yep. So if we go to the after one, we can see that that is changing. We don't see that medial margin to the same degree as we did in the before one. We can see that left shoulder lifting a little bit and the amount of tension in the low back tissue is starting to soften. And then if we go to the before four, we can see her, again, her body becoming more upright. It's not being uh, pulled so far left. Um, we can see that left medial margin kind of acting out again, um, but again, not as bad as the beginning of the first session. And if we go after four, a little bit more change, a little softer, and then if we go after five. And then what I want you to do is, as we're looking at this picture, we could almost cut her body in half, and we have two symmetrical halves. If we were playing a game of memory, and we were looking for the two halves, to, to the two cards to go to each other, where if you scroll back to the before one picture, if we cut her body in half, they don't match each other. They, they don't go with each other. We can see that, you know, significant compression. We, can, we can't really see her right scapula at all. We can see that left medial margin. And then if we come to the after five picture, look at that symmetry that's starting to faci be facilitated with, within the structure. And again, for the, for the audio listeners, um, what we're seeing is, that, again, her, her head was leaning off to the, to the left a lot more. Her whole upper body was lean, leaning off to the side, and now it's much more centered. Like the center of her head, basically, it, it, it centers with her spine. Where right. In the before one photo, uh, the, the, the center of her spine bisects like the right side of her head. So right. Now, in the after five, we see that it's much more, the midline of the head is lined up with the midline of the body. Absolutely. And this is only halfway. And so, so what, I, what I like to tell my patients or, or any of our students is, if I gave you a 5% raise in your paycheck or in your income or your salary this week, you know, that's like, okay, that's, that's good. That's, that's really amazing. Well, if next week we give you another 5% and the third week you get five more percent, now you're up to 15% of a raise, right? Well, if we get to session five and, and, and you've got 5% every week, that's life-changing money, Right. When it comes to our patients, if I can get one of my Parkinson's or my dystonia patients to decrease their tremor rate by 5%, that's the difference between them being able to feed themselves or not. That's the difference between them being able to take a scoop of, of food on their fork or on their spoon and it falling all over the place or not. And so even though week by week it looks like, okay, are things really changing? By the time we work from the beginning of one to the end of 10, it's profound in significance. And, and these are the things that I get very excited about. And more than anything else, I, I just want to take a minute to um, express my profound gratitude um, to this program that you, you put together, Isaac. Um, you know, to be honest, you know, I've been doing before and after pictures. Um, one of the biggest things that happens in our profession as structural integrators is that they don't do before and after pictures. Um, oh, and it, I just can't understand why they stop. Um, but what I have been able to do and the relationships that I've been able to build with doctors over the years exclusively come from when I go to a neurologist who, because we don't have a lot of gold standard double blind studies to take them, um, when I take them these before and after pictures and I take them before and after videos and it's undeniable that evidence. So not only does it help the patient be able to facilitate and really recognize what's going on within their own body and it increases awareness, but when we can take this information and, and share it with people who are really questioning or, or, or doubting what we're doing, um, it, it's life-changing. And one of the things that I'm doing with Body Align Pro now is that especially for my movement disorder patients, when we have them lay on a table and let's say our initial assessment is an, we have them reach up with their arm, well, when it's shaking and moving all over the place and then at the end of the first session, it's floating up there smoothly with very little tremor. When I can show that to the doctor, they can see that, holy cow, the work that we were doing, and maybe we can't explain exactly what's happening, but we can see the before and the after with the video, with the picture software. This, this is a life-changing um, tool for, for us as, as educators. Yeah, I, and, and that's, that's where it was, for me, I'm, I, this project has been such a, 
I you know I can't even have words to express of how much I'm just wordless right now. And I, I I'm thank you for for all your kind words about the program, and, and it's so nice to be able to hear somebody have the same experience that I had with photos and how much it how much education there is not only for for myself as a practitioner but for the clients right for like you're saying the doctors and to have that that validation is practice changing it changes your practice you know right i've had other practitioners go how do you get such a full practice i have i'm i'm booked like in a month in advance and it's it has to do with this i think it has a lot to do with this process of taking photos regardless if there's someone's using my app or or something else right be able to use a program that that validates one your work two helps you educate your clients um easier you know in an easy way three to be able to talk with other healthcare practitioners about what you're doing how you can help each other out because it's 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 this coming together right that is so so important for all of us to evolve as human beings and our work and help each other out so, absolutely uh, and, and i just want to reiterate that the, the people who don't have busy practices i, I do a lot of uh, consulting and, and mentoring work for sires kind of all over the country and almost always the people with the slowest practices are they're not doing before and after, after work when your patient looks at these pictures and and they can unequivocally see the changes they are compelled to tell every single person about their experience. Yeah. When someone, when you ask someone, well, how does that feel compared to before we started? The truth is I can give someone a cookie and they're going to feel better, right? So was it the cookie? Was it the work that we did? When they see the pictures and they see that things are different, they are sold at a level that your referral rate is the key to building a busy practice moreover than anything else. And this one tool, I believe is 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 the difference maker. So so as you said, whatever way people are doing it, do it. But but the the software that Isaac has put together, the the user friendly, um, the the interface, the fact that your clients can get access to this on their own and they can show their friends and family, especially with smartphones today. I can't tell you how many of my patients now are at a barbecue and they're like, oh my gosh, you got to see this thing I'm doing. I can't describe what's happening, but look at my before and after pictures. The phone is ringing off the hook for appointments. That's cool. That's cool because that's exactly that's exactly uh, one of the the thought process I had behind. It. For those out there that aren't aware, there's a patient portal side of the app called Bodyline Connect, and that patient portal side allows uh, your patient or client, whatever you want to call them, to be able to connect to the practitioner's side of photos that you have on file of them. And they, they have the before and after uh, uh, features that Bodyline Pro has, so they can toggle through, show their doctor, show their friends and family, because um, word of mouth is the best. Right. The best referral. I get a lot of referrals just from that aspect in my, in my practice as well. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm so stoked to hear that that's, that's working for you out there. I'm just, that makes me so happy that, that one, that that's working and it's helping the people in your practice improve their lives. I mean, that, that to me, I, it gets me emotional in, in so many ways that, that the working together of all this stuff is just, it's, it's just, more and more people are getting reached and that's it's just fantastic so thank you for everything that you do kevin it's it's you're doing amazing work you're doing amazing things for helping people out and self-empowering people um this is fantastic everything that you're doing i'm just so excited that you were that got you on the show here today so i've been well, wanting to get you on here for a while i mean yeah, we've been, we've been that, you know? <laughs> yeah I, I really appreciate uh, your, your time and um, you know, and, and sometimes people, they, they just, uh, just get it, get the app, put it into play, 
Um, and, and whether you're a structural integrator or not, if you are trying to facilitate measurable changes, if you're a Pilates instructor, if you're a yoga instructor, if you're a personal trainer, um, you know, being it, it takes just seconds to put these into play, but the lifetime of, of improvement and changes that you're going to help your patients have, and, and I believe have, have in your practice, it's, it, it's the game changer. Fantastic. So um, before, we, before we end the, the show here, um, I just wanted to, to ask, is there any, um, how can people reach you for one? I want to, I'm going to go into that, but is there, uh, is there, you just gave a, actually you just gave a great piece of advice to people. Is there any other advice that you want to give anybody besides the advice that you just gave, like something that they can take away from this to, um, either, you know, a patient client or practitioner side that, that they can, um, uh, something they can take away from today. And uh, we're going to have all the links to, you know, your, fo your foam rolling, release really rolling, uh, your school, um, everything that you're doing, we're going to put in the show, in the show notes so that people can find you and, um, you know, follow up with you if they want and, and really check out, you know, either come see you personally, check out your DVDs that are on, on uh, the relief, the rolling and uh, possibly even attend your school. And uh, yeah. so anything that else that you want to share with everybody out there that they can either take away to their practice or maybe something that they can do to help themselves out for today. Um, I, the, the biggest thing is that we got to get people moving, um, you know, great manual therapy and, and physical intervention from a practitioner is huge, but the, the self care piece, you know, is, is so important and, and, and what the pain science world is showing us in regards to, you know, when people have tools and abilities to be able to address pain in the moment it's happening literally changes your white and your gray matter, right? So having tools and techniques to be able to move more easily and more efficiently without pain, whether that's movement education from, you know, Pilates, yoga, whatever works for you, CrossFit, you know, whatever is your thing, you just keep doing it. Um, and then self-care, you know, the, the goal is to not be dependent on having a therapist do the session so now I can have a good week. You know, that, that's let's get, we, as a practitioner, I want to get my patients on track so they can do as much on their own to take care of themselves first. And then if they need some more help, that's different. And right now we have millions of people who believe they can't make it to Friday if they don't get a treatment on Monday. And, and all of that comes from, you know, education and empowerment, you know, more, more than anything else. And, and it's the combination of, of those things. And if you're a structural integrator, if you're a massage therapist, if you're a chiropractor who, and you're, you're frustrated and you're, and you're struggling, um, I would just say build your community. Like you, it's hard. You know, being an entrepreneur is no joke. Uh, and it's, it's not for the thin skin and lighthearted. And we can get busy in our treatment rooms, um, and then we are doing our own thing, but connecting with people like Isaac, connecting with people who want to help you take your practice to your next level um, with different you know, tools and resources um, is where I think that we need to focus, where we've spent so many years, everybody becomes their own specialist, and everybody does their own thing. But it's this you know, tribal you know, community of, of helping our whole town get better, and when I know I can't help someone, send them off to an acupuncturist or send them to the neurologist or, or the right tool at the right time, more important than saying, well, this is the one all and only way to help people. Yeah, that's the, syner the synergy of, of modalities is amazing what can happen. I, I worked with yeah. acupuncturists for years in my office, and it was amazing that when I couldn't have results with somebody with structural integration or corrective exercises, she would do acupuncture on them, and it would, it would just be like, amazing results and then by right. and then the two together that synergistic um uh working together was was just fantastic so again kevin thank you so much for being on the show with me today really absolutely happy. thanks for having me thank you. you want me to uh rock out my our, our websites real quick uh yeah rock them out um so our the website for our clinic and for any of our upcoming classes is neuromovementintegration.com um you can get to us uh email us uh, from there our uh self care website is uh, rtrolling.com and that's uh for our uh self care program with the foam roller um and then we also have uh, a home care program to teach uh people how to do 
um, work with their dogs. Um, HealthyPawsTherapy.com is uh, the, the website. Oh, that that um, is so awesome. Yeah, so so I, I'm a big dog person, and so we wanted a way to be able to help people help their four-legged family members. Um, so HealthyPawsTherapy.com is a, a really awesome, simple uh, DVD that we have that uh, you can learn how to do uh, some of this you know, fascial manual work uh, with your canine companions. That's so great, man. So great. So much stuff to cover. We're going to have to have you on the podcast again. Perfect. Hey, um, thanks, Isaac. I really appreciate your time today. Um, and uh, reach out if uh, you're looking for some help. Um, anybody in the SI community, all we want is for people to uh, live the most healthy, vibrant, dynamic lives possible. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you for watching the Body Align Pro podcast. For more information, visit bodyalignpro.com. You can download the app for free on the Apple App Store. This podcast is also available on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Be sure to check out the show notes for links. If you are enjoying this, please be sure to subscribe and share this with your friends and family. Once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.